Hi divers, Alec Pierce again. Uh, vintage scuba. I got some more neat stuff to show you here. Stuff you're not going to find in your local dive store. Trust me on that. In fact, I doubt very much if your local dive store owner will recognize this or even know what it is. So let me show you a couple of these things there with you. You might be interested. Maybe, you know, maybe you guys are interested in getting some vintage equipment. Most divers I know that have been around for a while are kind of interested in getting a two-hose regulator. It is neat. It really is neat. And you can put it on the wall and tell your grandkids you're a frog man or something. I don't know. Whatever you want. We actually use them. Some of my friends, my vintage diver group, I'm thinking of Rob down in, uh, in uh, Ohio and others, they dive all over the world, from Cozumel to the Arctic. Regular diving, deep, shallow, wreck, everything. Two hose regs, that's all they use, absolutely. Uh, so anyway, uh, if you are interested, maybe this will get you spurred uh, to looking into some vintage gear. And if you are interested and need some ideas, or is it worth it, is this any good, you call me. Keep those comments coming. I love it. Hey, today we're going to talk about some odd valves, tank valves. You know, you know, tank, you know what a tank is. You know what a regulator is. Well, there's a valve on top of the tank. It goes into the tank. It, I guess you might say it traps the air in the tank, and then with the knob on it, it lets the air out when you want it to. That's the valve. Critical piece of equipment. No valve, no scuba. Understand? So tank valves are very important. And over the years, since the 50s, when scuba started to become a popular sport, tank valves have changed a fair bit. The general principle hasn't changed, but their design and their appearance have changed a great deal. So let me take you back to the 50s. And this is an old valve from the 50s. This is called the pillar valve. And you can see as I rotate it slowly here and Kevin comes in closely, you can see it was called the pillar valve because it's quite tall. It stands up like a pillar. The knob for turning it off and on is on the top up here. You see that? Kind of weird, huh? And you can see the great big fat O-ring. This actually is not the oldest valve I have. The valves before this, just a few years before this, they had a flat plastic surface. There were no O-rings. Can you imagine a world as a scuba diver without O-rings? Well, it did exist. And they had a flat plastic, and you put the regulator on it, and you cranked it on as hard as you could to make it seal, and you usually did pretty good. But this is the old-fashioned pillar valve. And that's been replaced by a much more modern valve. The valves today look, look largely like this. A low, low valve, you see, much safer. Knob is on the side. And this is what you're used to. But that's the oldest type of valve. So one of the, some of the strange ones that have appeared over the years. Well, at the, around the same time as the early valves, there were two types, as you probably already know. In fact, I think we had a vintage scuba session on J-valves, reserve valves, the J-valve and the K-valve and the R-valve, I think I mentioned as well. I forget the name of that, uh, but uh, you can take a look and you'll find a, one of my videos on J-valves. And I think it's interesting as well because I actually show the the source of the terminology j valve and k valve and if you don't know how they got named first of all it's not because of their shape uh, then it might be interesting to watch that video okay but uh, along with the pillar valve shortly afterwards as the valves became a uh, a little fancier, they started to chrome them, plate them. I guess that makes them better. I'm not so sure. They also had the J valve. And the J valve, as you recall, has the knob on the side now, not a pillar valve anymore with the knob on top. The knob is now on the side and it's less likely to get banged and knocked over. Plus, it has a J mechanism on the side, so it has a reserve. You see, in the up until the mid 60s, we didn't have pressure gauges, submersible pressure gauges. We had pressure gauges, but not submersible. So <clears throat> when you're on the surface, you could see how much air was in your tank, but when you got underwater, where it was critical to know how much air was in the tank, you didn't know. So we had a reserve valve. When this rod was up like that, you know, off you go diving. And then after a while, as you know, you starts to get hard to breathe. Uh oh, I'm running out of air. You reach and pull the lever down your side. The lever pulls this down, and you got three or four minutes of extra air, a reserve valve. And this was mandatory equipment for intelligent divers, for safe divers at one time, right through the 50s and the 60s, and gosh, into the 70s, probably. You had to have a J-valve to be safe. So this is another type of valve. That's the other type of valve that came out. Now, there are lots of different variations. Here's one that you're probably not going to see. I doubt very much that any of you have seen a valve like this. <clears throat> Looks pretty common. Threaded section that go into the tank. And there's, of course, the old ring surface on which the regulator fits. And there's a safety release on one side and just a big hole in the other. But there's no knob. How do you turn the air off and on? Zoom in on this, Kevin, if you haven't done so already. You see, let's see. It looks like a regular valve. How do you turn the air off? Look at the back. You see this back here? Look at that. That is an on-off valve. Watch how it works. You take it in your fingers. You pull out like that and flip it. Like that. On. 
And you get the end of the die, you want to take your regulator off, you grab that, you pull it out, flip it, back over, off. And this plastic thing flops down and locks it in place. So it can't accidentally go on or off. Pretty neat, huh? A lever, I guess you call it a lever valve, would you? Instead of a knob, it has a lever or a switch, maybe. A switch valve. I don't know. I have only ever seen one of those. This one. And so I just don't know for sure if, if you have seen one. This was made by, it looks like Scuba Pro. So it's a big company, but a very rare, very odd valve. Now, a couple of other valves are pretty weird. Here's a valve, and this looks pretty common. This is a standard valve made by Healthways, a later version, you know, from the 60s, 70s, has the on-off knob on one side, and the J valve, as I explained, on the other side. Well, this is a kind of an odd valve because <clears throat> while it has the O-ring in there, I don't know if you can see in there, Kevin, but you see right in the middle of that, Circle, there's a hole. They drilled a big hole in there for some reason. Most of the valves have a very small hole and, and for the air to come out. But this is a great big threaded hole. Well, that was unique because this was made by Healthways. And it was unique because this valve was made to accommodate Healthways, also very unique, regulator. This regulator called the airflow. We talked about this in one of my sessions a while ago. But I thought I'd mention it again for those that missed it. This is actually a single hose regulator. Second stage. Looks like a lot of second stages of today. And the first stage, what? First stage, where's the yoke? How do you put this on the tank? Well, that's exactly what this specific valve from Healthways was designed to do. If you had a airflow regulator from Healthways and you had the airflow valve on your Healthways, uh, Healthways valve on a Healthways tank, then you would simply take your regulator and it screwed in. Now, some of you are going to say, ah, it's just like a DIN, but it's not. It's not exactly the same as a DIN. A DIN is much, much different, and the DIN threads are much bigger and stronger, designed for extremely high pressure. This was just a rather unique valve and regulator combination that came out in the 60s by Healthbase, another big, big company, and unusual. So you get the reg screwed in there up against the O-ring, turn the air on, and... <sighs> oh, she's going to think. Another odd valve that uh, you don't see too much anymore. Let me show you some that are really very interesting and odd. <clears throat> now, some people, way back when, when they had the valve in, I think maybe short people, I don't know for sure, would find, and maybe it's, it still happens today, I sometimes have divers today saying, how come when I reach back and I want to look up, I bang my head on the valve and it hurts? And my, my usual suggestion is if you drop the tank a little bit, in the harness, which you can do safely, drop it down a little bit, and it's less likely that will happen. I myself have experienced that, but to <clears throat> be honest, I've only experienced it when in a swimming pool. Because if you're in a swimming pool, swimming all on the bottom horizontally, and you want to look up, you tend to bang your head against the valve. But in open water, you don't do that so often. Your body is usually at an angle like this. It doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. In fact, it was so common that a company that wasn't terribly well known at the time, brought out this valve. See, this is an ordinary valve. There's a knob on it and threads to go into the tank. You see, it goes down inside. But look. That's where the regular mounts. The regular mounts are way back there. So if you look at it from the side, this is the way it sits in the tank. A bent back valve, I guess you'd call it. Bent back valve. So the valve comes up, but it end up bends back like this. And your regulator mounts away back here. So your head is less likely. I don't think it's impossible, but much less likely. So these valves came out for a few years. Weren't very common either. But they did come out for a few years. Rather, a rare valve. If you see one of these, then I will tell you right now that you should, if you want it for a collection, pick it up. That's a pretty rare valve. Another couple of interesting things that came out right along the same lines. I told you earlier that if you had a J valve, that is a valve with no reserve on it and then you then you know it wasn't very good because you could run out of air and you wouldn't know so all divers were trained to always have a tank with a j valve the difficulty was that when we went traveling and we rented tanks so let's say this is the 1960 66 67 and and it's uh, around that time i made my first trip to cozumel a little later than that but around that time and you get down to the resort down in Cozumel or some other place, <clears throat> and uh, you go to rent a tank. Almost always, you're going to get a J-valve on those tanks back in those days. There were steel tanks, and they had, sorry, not J-valves, K-valves. They have a K-valve on the tank. And the reason is very simple. It's called economic. Yeah. 
the J valve with the reserve cost more than the K valve. And most dive stores, even to this day, a lot of dive stores still make the same mistake. They buy the cheapest rental gear they can find. And that's what they rent and they give it to students for training. It's not a really, really good marketing philosophy because the students see the brand name on that equipment and they know it's not very good. Breeze hard and so on and they don't want to buy that brand. But some stores still do it. However, it was certainly the case back then. In the old days, the resorts didn't want to spend any more money than necessary on these scuba divers. They weren't too sure if the sport was actually going to take off. So they bought tanks with K valves. So if you were a safe diver and wanted to go diving at that resort down in Mexico, and you wanted to have a J valve, you had two choices. You could spend a whole lot of money and you could buy a regulator with a built-in J valve. Yeah, they made them. They made regulators with built-in constant reserves, but they were pretty expensive. But the other thing you could do is this. You could pick up one of these things. Now, this was actually designed and manufactured by a good friend of mine, Sam LeCoe, who was the founder of a company called Sportsways, and he made this thing. Take a close look at this, Kevin. Let me see if I can describe it. You see, you can see there's a yoke screw, like a regulator. See that? Okay. And that's obviously a valve. That's where a regulator fits onto here. And over here is a reserve lever. Well, that's pretty weird how that work up. There's no threads. It doesn't go into a tank. It's not designed to go into a tank. If you were going south to Mexico for a vacation and you found out that the resort had only K valves, then you could take this neat device from Sportsways and you could put it on the resort's K valve like this, <clears throat> snug it up, <clears throat> turn the air on, and you now have a J valve, a valve with a constant reserve on the side. See, see what we've done? Good idea. I don't know if he sold very many. He kind of chuckled when he saw this. I met him a while ago and was talking to him. He laughed. He said, I didn't think those would sell. But obviously, there's at least one around, right? So this K-valve and tank has been converted with Sam LeCoq's J-valve converter into a J-valve. So you don't put the regulator here. You put the regulator over here. Now you got a constant reserve. Pretty neat, huh? Another neat device that's, uh, yeah, you won't find this in your local dive store, that's for sure. I want to show you just two more real quick ones. First of all, <clears throat> the J valve, that is the constant reserve mechanism, was pretty popular. And the most common format, the most common uh, uh, way that it was designed and sold to divers was like this, with a, with a valve on the side, a lever on the side of the valve, and you activate it with, with a lever uh, down the side, called the J-rod, a rod. It's just a steel rod, just ran down, so you could reach it with your thumb and pull it down. And obviously, you called it a J-rod, you know, it's logical. Some used a little string and other various ways as well, but that was the most common. So this is your most common uh, J-valve, and these were around for years. So, gosh, from, let's say, 1965, until about, oh gosh, 1995, maybe later. I don't know if you can still buy J valves. Maybe they're still available. Uh, of course, we all use pressure gauges today, but so this J valve was around for years and years and years. Everybody had to use J valves. But there were other types as well. Other companies tried to, to see if other designs would work. A big, big company called Voigt uh, made scuba gear for many years. They're very, very popular scuba gear. In fact, it's the scuba equipment that was used in the uh, Sea Hunt series. So if you've been watching my Sea Hunt playlists, uh, you, when you look at the gear that I show that uh, Mike Nelson and Sea Hunt used to use, that's Voigt equipment. This, is, this was made by Voigt. This is a valve. And you can see this is a pretty simple valve. Uh, it threads into the tank, as usual. And uh, there's the O-ring on the front to which the regulator attaches. And here's the knob on the side to turn the air off and on. Okay. This is a constant reserve, or J-type valve. Where's the lever? There is no lever. There's just this silly, what's this black thing? This silly black thing comes down like this. And the way this works is very simple. This was on the tank behind your head, and this silly black thing came under your arm, and when you got low on air, instead of reaching back and pulling the lever down, you reach down and you pull this. Oh, okay. So this is really a very simple reserve valve, just like a J valve. But instead of a J valve, it has a cord on it. You pull on this, opens the reserve. Kind of a neat idea. Difficulty was this darn cable didn't last very long, certainly in salt water. It, got, it was bad and hard on maintenance. And sometimes the mechanism wasn't as good as it should have been either. So 
this slowly disappeared. It wasn't around for very long, and uh, and the uh, the popular and common J valve that do, we've known, most of us have known for many years, appeared. One more I want to show you. One more, and this is all designed, guys, and in, 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 in guys and girls, in, in the interest of diver safety, right? Constant reserves, J valves, all this stuff to make the diver safer. Here's another example. Another valve that you may or may not ever see. You won't see it in your dive store, but you may or may not see it. So here's a, here's a valve, okay? Pretty straightforward, let's go over it again. There's the threads, goes into the tank, right? Uh, the uh, regulator sits here on top of the O-ring, no problem. Here's the on-off knob, yeah, that's no problem, like so. There is no J-rod over here. There's this funny little arm that sticks out with a hole in it. And what's all this junk hanging down inside the tank? Huh, it's pretty neat. Well, I'll tell you what it is. This is what's called a sonic reserve valve. Now, it's a little bit of a misnomer because there's no reserve with this. There's a sonic. <laughs> it wraps on the tank, but <clears throat> there's no reserve. It doesn't save any air. All it does is warn you that your air is getting low. So with this particular valve, these sonic valves, and these are pretty rare as well, with this sonic valve, what happened is <clears throat> when you got down to about 500 PSI, when you inhaled, this little wrapper on the bottom would bang against the inside of the tank every time you hit it. In fact, this one is, is this has been used, Kevin, because you see the end there has a little flat spot. It's been banging on the steel tank. So here's what you would hear if you had one of these. If you inhale, you go like this. Just when you inhale. And it would wrap on the inside of the steel tank. Now, <clears throat> all your buddies for 100 feet around would know that, oh, pierces out of air again. Darn it. Air hog dives over, <laughs> but uh, that's exactly what happened. And what you could do is you could, there was a, usually a string attached to this and ran down your tank. You could pull on this and that would stop the wrapping. And then you could decide what to do, go up or not. No, that wasn't much of a decision. Yeah, but that's what that was—a sonic reserve valve. So there you go, a few unusual, odd valves. I didn't want you to think that all valves in scuba diving were what you see today when you walk into a dive store, or even that they were all K or a J, as you learned in one of my previous videos. You know, there were all kinds, I have more than this, all kinds of strange valves, reserves and springs and levers and all kinds of stuff on them. I think it's very good that today for modern divers that all the valves have been standardized and within reason they all have a valve on them, a standard valve, all the same, largely all the same, and everybody uses a pressure gauge so they're not being told when they're out of air that they know how much air they have. They can actually plan the dive. So diving in a lot of ways is much safer today. And these are some of the steps that were taken over the years to get us to that point. I hope that was interesting. You guys keep your eyes open for unusual valves. Let me know if you can find one of these valves with a lever on the back. I'd like to know if there's another one around. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. Talk to you again real soon.